Hi, I'm Diane Hendricks and welcome to Fresh to Frozen and Back. This show is going to make your life easier. Each episode I'm going to teach you how to prepare delicious and better for you meals and then how to freeze them properly and then bring them back to the table at a later date. This episode is all about desserts. Sweet, delicious, and better for you desserts. So first up, we've got pumpkin cheesecake dream jars. And it's really easy and you're gonna love them and so will your family. Okay, so here's all you do. Here I have ginger snap cookies. You can use vanilla wafers, you can use graham crackers, any type of cookies that you like. Even those cinnamon toasty cereal makes a nice uh, cracker crust. So you're gonna put them into a food processor and you're gonna pulse them up. You're gonna see recipes that call for sugar with this, but I don't, I don't add any sugar to it. I, those, these, these cookies already have a little bit of sweetness, so you don't need to add any extra sugar. The ginger snaps are a little bit tougher than like a vanilla wafer, so you might have to do it a couple of times. And if you see any big pieces, just do it again. Okay. That's perfect. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of butter. And what that's going to do is that is going to um, turn this into like little crumbs, which is going to make a little crust at the bottom of each one of these jars. So you'll see that it, it's little crummy. It becomes like little coarse crumbs as the butter gets incorporated. I don't use a lot of butter in my cooking, but there are certain times where it really is necessary. I don't eat a lot of dessert either, but when I do eat dessert, I enjoy it. <laughs> okay, so good, perfect. So we have these little crumbs, and what we're gonna do, this is to, you can make this in a spring form pan if you want, like a whole cheesecake, but I have this thing with, um, when I do like chef dinners and stuff, I like to do things in jars. I make little, I call them dream jars. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take a little bit, like a heaping tablespoon of this cookie mixture, and put it in the in each jar. And then you can go in with your fingers, but what I think works the best is find something in your house that fits in this jar, which helps. So I have this little like old, like, I don't know, apothecary kind of little, little uh, bottle that fits perfectly in there. So I just push down with that. And that's all you do. So you're gonna do that for whatever number of jars that you have. And then you're gonna take these, put them on a baking sheet, and then bake them at 350 for about 10 minutes. So instead of me just putting that in the oven for 10 minutes, I'm just gonna bring it back as if it was already done. So these have been baking for 10 minutes, and now you have this nice little crust. Plus, this is going back in the oven after you add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so we have some crumbs here left over, because obviously I only did two jars. But we're not gonna get rid of that. I don't waste anything. So we're gonna hold on to that, and I think I'm gonna crumble that on the top when we're done. Okay, so we got the jars all prepped and ready to go. So now what we need to do is we need to make the filling. So before we get started, I wanna do a little pumpkin 101. This is a cheese pumpkin. You see these at the markets in the fall, and these are the best, most delicious pumpkins for cooking, for any pumpkin recipes. This is the pumpkin that you buy in a, uh, at the store in a can, and this is the pureed pumpkin from this, and this is what I use to make them. It's so easy to do. All you do is you cut this in half, you scoop out the seeds, and then you just put it on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, upside down with the skin side down, and just bake it in the oven until it's really soft. And this is what it looks like once it's baked, one of those pumpkins. And then I use a grapefruit spoon because it's got those little sharp edges and it makes it so easy to get out. And then look, all you do is you just scoop it out like that, put it in the food processor, and you have your own homemade pumpkin puree. This has a natural sweetness. So one time, if you decide to do this, buy some canned pumpkin too and take a little taste of that and then take a little taste of this and the difference is it's off the hook. You won't even believe it. Okay, so there's your pumpkin 101. All right, so we're gonna take this pumpkin puree. Let's use, let's use the one I brought. This is the pumpkin puree from that from that cheese pumpkin over there. That's only half of it, that one I just showed you. So you're gonna put the pumpkin puree in here. 
And the pumpkin that you buy at the store that's in a can, it's already been cooked. So if there's recipes that call for you to cook it, it's been cooked already. So you don't have to, you can almost kind of skip that step because this is going back in the oven. So we have pumpkin puree and we've got some cream cheese. And I'm gonna add a little more puree because I'm right now I'm making way more. Ah, what am I gonna do with it? I'm gonna freeze it. Right now, I was just gonna say, I'm, way, I'm making way more than I'm gonna use for those two little jars. But then I'm gonna freeze this and then I can make that cheese, those cheesecake jars anytime I want. It'll take 10 minutes when somebody's coming over to the house, which is what I'm all about, easy. Okay, then we're gonna add a little bit of brown sugar. Dark brown sugar has such a good flavor. Not too much, you don't need to, it doesn't need to be too sweet. A little bit of pumpkin pie spice that has nutmeg and ginger and all that good stuff in it and cinnamon, and I always like to add a little bit of extra cinnamon. I like a little extra kick of cinnamon. We're also gonna add an egg, but I wanna blend this up first because I don't wanna whip that egg too much. So I wanna do the egg at the end. So let's just get this going. You're gonna pulse it first to get that cream cheese kind of incorporated in there. You always wanna taste when you're cooking. I don't have this all measured out with exact ingredients right now, but I'll know exactly whether or not this is what I, how I want it to be. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the egg and we're just gonna, we're just gonna do like a five second pulse because we don't wanna over mix this egg. That's it. And that is all she wrote, let me tell you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, um, you know, underneath the bottom of this uh, food processor, if I don't want to waste or, or uh, dirty up another bowl, you can stick your finger in the bottom under here and that you, you can hold on to the blade so that the blade doesn't fall out while you're trying to put it into things. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this and you're just gonna pour it into these little jars. Oh my gosh, it smells so good and looks so good. And you're gonna go just about to the top because this is gonna rise a little bit and then it's gonna fall again. So you're gonna go just near the top on both of these jars with the crust that you had already made. And you're gonna do that with the amount that you, you know, however many you're gonna be making. Now, like I said, this is left over. Put this in a freezer safe container, label it and date it, and you can pull this out, throw a couple cookies in the, in the food processor and you've got yourself a, a dessert that you can whip up in no time. So you're gonna take these and we're gonna bake them at 350 for about 30 minutes. And then after the 30 minutes, if you, with the leftover crumbles that you had, you're just gonna add some crumbles to the top because that little bit of butter in there is gonna kind of like make it, give it like a, almost like a, like a layer, like a top. And that's it, that's all you do. And then when you come back, you add a little whipped cream, which I'm gonna show you with the frozen ones right now. I have four right here that I've frozen. And these glass jars are great for freezing. And they actually have a nice little natural seal that you have to pop up. So these were already frozen. These are cooked and frozen. You can just put these right back in the oven. You can serve them warm or you can serve them cool. Just put them in, back in the oven, 350, about 10 minutes. And then when you're done, you take a little bit of whipped cream. You can dollop that on top. Just like a nice irregular dollop. I like the way that looks. Add a hit of pumpkin pie spice, and you've got yourself a dessert that everyone will love. When we come back, I'm gonna show you my peppermint chocolate bark that will knock your socks off and takes about literally five minutes to make. Okay, this might be the simplest dessert ever, and you can do so much with it with uh, different varieties, but you're gonna absolutely love it. It's bark, chocolate bark. The beauty of chocolate bark is that you can add any ingredients that you like. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a peppermint bark, but I also do a harvest bark in the fall that has cranberries and apricots and uh, pumpkin seeds, and you can do um, any type of bark. I do an almond joy, a, a peanut butter cup bark that you can do peanuts and peanut butter and Almond Joy has unsweetened coconut and, and almonds and almond extract, it's really good. And you can find a lot of those recipes on my website, which is dianehendricks.com. So today I'm gonna do peppermint bark. Great for the holidays, it's also great smack in the middle of the summer. So here is all you do. You're gonna take chocolate chips or chocolate chunks, whatever you have, 
the darker the chocolate you use, the more antioxidants and the healthier it is. So this is 70%, which is really good. And for me, that's about where I like to be. I've had, seven, you know, the 75 I, I kind of like, but when you start getting up into the 80s and the 90s, it gets really bitter. So I like to be about 70, 75, but if you enjoy the really dark, dark chocolate, you're getting more nutritional benefits. So these are healthy and natural brown rice uh, puffs. So you could use, you know, like the uh, crisp rice, but this is a brown rice puff. And then what we're gonna add to it is we're gonna add the chocolate. So you're just gonna put that in a bowl and add the chocolate. If I told you this is pretty much all there is to it, you wouldn't believe me, but I'm telling you, it is. So I'm gonna use this rubber spatula because that's gonna get it all out of there. I don't wanna waste it. And you kind of have to move slightly quickly with this. You don't have to go crazy, but obviously the um, chocolate is gonna solidify as time goes by. And this little gadget that I have is just a chocolate melter. You plug it in, it's got a melt uh, setting and a warm setting. If you don't have one of these, which a lot of people don't have, you can take a pot of boiling water, put a metal bowl on top of it, and then put the chocolate in there and it'll melt in there. So you need that double boiler type of thing where it's being heated from underneath by the water. So here's all we do. You're gonna mix this all together. Oh, it's so good. And you want to get it so that all of the crisps have some chocolate on them. So you don't want any that you can still see the crisps. And you don't even have to use the crisps. You can just do melted chocolate with the, the candy canes on top. But I like the, crispy, the crispiness of it. Then you're going to put it out on a parchment lined cookie sheet. Hold on to the corners of the cookie sheet. Let me move this over here to make it a little bit easier. Hold on to the corners of the parchment paper and then you're just going to spread it. So just spread it out into a, a even layer. Oh, so good. Like I said, the, the recipes are on my website. And you can do this as thick or as thin as you like. I like it kind of thin. So I'm gonna go like in a more thin layer. You can even use a lined, like a rimmed baking sheet and make these big thick like bars that are really good too. Okay, that's it. And then once you're done, once you get it as thin as you'd like it, we're gonna take candy canes. I couldn't find any candy canes right now, so what I have is like these little peppermint candies. You're going to put them in a zip top bag and you're going to use a mallet or anything else that you can find. Smash each one of them up. These are harder than candy canes. When you do a candy cane, it's not that hard. Okay, so now you have these little crumbs and then you're just going to take them in your hand and you're just going to distribute them evenly among the top of this bark. And this is so pretty around the holidays. Some of the chunks are a little big. It's so pretty around the holidays and it makes such a really nice gift to bring to somebody's house instead of a bottle of wine or some flowers, you bring something homemade and edible that you really like. Then you're just gonna put this in the refrigerator for about 45 minutes and then when it's done, all you do is you just come out and break it. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like frozen because they freeze beautifully. So here's how I froze these in particular. The container that I have these in is not freezer safe. And that's just what I happened to have at the time. So I'm using a freezer safe zip top bag as well as some saran wrap that I made sure that I got around each of the edges. And then look at this. These were frozen. These are two months old. Look at how delicious and beautiful they are. I'm telling you, these are absolutely fantastic. You, your kids, your family, your friends, everybody's gonna love them. When we come back, I'm gonna show you some apple pie crisp crusted deliciousness. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we're gonna make apple cinnamon crisp cups. They're individual one bite desserts that are sweet and decadent and still have a healthy twist to them. But I love the size of them because you can just kind of pop them in your mouth or have them beautifully spread out on a platter when you have company. It's a nice little one bite after dinner. And here's all you do, so good. Okay, in a food processor, you're gonna take some rolled oats, a little bit of flour, which is going to bind everything together. 
We have some cinnamon, a little bit of allspice, a little bit of ginger. I love ginger, I love the smell of it. Mm, it's good for your stomach too, when you have a stomach ache, you know, you put a little bit of ginger in a little bit of water and you just kind of sip it slow and it helps your, uh, your belly feel better. And a little bit of brown sugar. You don't need a lot, just a tiny hit of brown sugar. And this is going to make the crust for the, there, that's what actually the cup is gonna be made from. So we're gonna put all this in the food processor and just kind of pulse it up. Cause you wanna break those oats down. But the oats are gonna actually give you some really great nutrition, lots of fiber. It also gives it a really nice consistency and a little bit of a crunch. So we got that pulsed and now we're gonna add just a little bit of butter. You're gonna need just a tiny bit just to kind of pull this all together. And now we're gonna make like a little coarse crumbs. So good, oh my gosh. Smells like Thanksgiving. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a heaping, tea, a heaping spoonful. First we're gonna spray this. I love olive oil spray. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna spray a mini muffin tin. Just spray it so it's, this is non-stick already, but I like to spray it because then you're guaranteed that it's not gonna stick. Then you're gonna take a heaping teaspoon, a teaspoon, tablespoon, and put it in these cups. You can go straight down all of them with this heaping tablespoon or teaspoon. Just fill it up to the top. Okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna push down into the cup without going through the bottom and just make a little cup out of it. And if you happen to poke a hole in it or anything, take a little piece and fill it back up again. And then you're gonna do that with all of these and, and push it up against the sides. And if it's not full enough like that one is, just add more. I have more over there. So you're just gonna push down in the middle and pull off to the side. And you just continue to do all that with all of those. So that's your crust. And then you're gonna bake them in the oven at 350 degrees for 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes, okay? Actually, let's just make them all. Cause I wanna eat them when they're done. So. We're just gonna make these little cups, which are absolutely delicious. My kids love this. It's like in a little apple pie. They're like little individual apple pies. Okay, so these guys are ready. Pushing up on the side and pulling and pushing down. You don't want it too thick on the bottom. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna bake this 350, 10 minutes. Oh, those pumpkin cheesecakes are in there. Ooh, you wanna see them? These are the pumpkin cheesecake dream jars. Now they're actually gonna fall a little bit, but look at how beautiful that looks. Now you can actually watch this fall. It's gonna fall down enough so that we can add the whipped cream. So that was just a little aside, but those are what we just made before. So let's keep them over there. So while they're cooking, we're gonna make the filling, which is so easy. So I have apples here that are tossed with lemon juice and that's gonna keep them from browning. Very quickly, let me show you how I core an apple. It's just the way I do it, but it works great. So you cut the whole apple down in half, then you lay it with the cut side up, and then just go at about a 45 degree angle this way, and a 45 degree angle that way. So you're just gonna go sideways this way, and then back down that way, and it's super simple. And then to get these little um, slices, you're gonna want them really tiny, because think about the size of the cup. So these are a little big, so I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna cut them in the size that we need for this. So we want these in a tiny little dice because the cups are so small. So you see how you get them in a little tiny dice. Let me just finish these off so we can get them all together. Keep it all together with one hand and then you're just gonna go straight down this way as well. So you're gonna cut them and then just go straight down like this. That's enough for me to show you how to do it. All these recipes are on my website, dianehendricks.com. Okay, so we're gonna heat up some apple cider. I love apple cider. Ooh, boy, did that get hot quick. So we're gonna heat up some apple cider and we're gonna add a teeny tiny bit of granulated sugar. That's just gonna give it a little bit of a sweetness and we're gonna let that sugar dissolve. I'm talking a little bit, like a teaspoon. Okay, and then after that sugar dissolves, we're gonna take um, some cornstarch which is gonna give it a little thickness, like that apple pie thickness, just a hit, and a little bit of cinnamon. And we're gonna to toss that 
in with the apples that have been tossed in lemon juice. And you know, we're using the lemon juice to, uh, to keep it from browning, but let me tell you, that little hit of lemon adds such a delicious, delicious flavor to this. Okay, so we're gonna put these apples, actually I wanna use the other ones, so let's use these. So we're gonna use these little guys. These are big, they, these would be great if you had like a big cup. Actually, these are perfect for a regular size muffin tin and these are perfect for the mini muffin tins. So depending on the size of the muffin tin you're using, you've got two options there. So again, we're gonna add a little cornstarch. We're gonna add a little cinnamon. That was a lot of cinnamon, but for me, that's, enough, that's good. Okay, and then we're gonna add that to the apple cider. Oh, yummy. We're gonna let that cook down. I think it needs just a little more apple because we want that thickness. We want that slight thickness. So let's do this. One more round. I don't even peel these apples. You don't need to peel your apples. The, the, the um, skin is delicious. It's full of fiber and it's absolutely wonderful. Okay, so let's get those in there and we're going to let that cook down just for a couple minutes. And it's perfect because that's going to cook down while the um, crust is cooking. So, see how these fell? I was just showing you that before. See how they kind of fell? It's great, and then you can screw the, tar the tops on the jars and then stick them in your freezer if you're not gonna have them now. But if you wanna, and then when you bring them back from, uh, from frozen, then you can add a little bit of whipped cream or a dollop of something. Okay, so while the crust is cooking and while this is reducing down, I'm gonna show you a quick, like ridiculously quick, delicious uh, Greek yogurt topping. 0% Greek yogurt, little pure vanilla extract. You wanna use the pure, not that fake stuff. And a little pumpkin pie spice, or cinnamon, or ginger, nutmeg, whatever combination you want. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna whisk that up. Oh, it is so delicious. Now because the apples have sweetness in them and the crust has a little bit of brown sugar, I really don't wanna add too much sweetness to this. If you'd like, you could add some honey, but I kinda like that, that, that raw, like yogurty flavor to balance out the sweetness of this stuff. Okay, I'm turning that down. Let that cook. Mmm, okay. So, while we're waiting, I'm gonna show you what it's like when they're frozen. So, just like we did with the bark, this container's not freezer safe. So I'm using a freezer uh, friendly uh, zip top bag. And some saran, plastic wrap. And then you're actually gonna see them frozen before you see them fresh, which is kinda cool. Frozen to fresh. <laughs> okay. And this is what they look like. Oh my gosh, they're so good. So these were frozen. And you can literally put these on a baking sheet, stick them in the oven until they're, you know, 10 minutes, 350. Isn't that beautiful? Love it. And that's how they look when they're frozen. So 10 minutes, 350, and that brings them right back to life. And you can add this uh, drizzle to them, which I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna take this and we're going to put it in a zip top bag. So good. And we don't need a lot because they're so small. That's it, I'll just do that. And then you're gonna zip over the top. Cut out a corner. Now, I would go, see this is all over in this corner already, so I'm gonna go over to that corner because I've already got a mess going on over there. So we're just gonna go over to that corner. Not, We don't have anything chunky in there, so we want just a teeny tiny little hole in the corner. And then that, when they come out of the oven, you're gonna drizzle it, I'm gonna show you. So these guys, they're not ready yet, but when they come out, you're gonna take the crust. So let's just kind of backtrack here. These are frozen. You're gonna take the crust, you're gonna scoop your apple filling into it. You're gonna take this delicious apple filling and scoop it right into the crust. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this delicious yogurt mixture and just drizzle it right across the top. And it looks so pretty. So you're just gonna serve it just like this. Well, thanks to watching Fresh to Frozen and back. I'm Diane Hendricks. Please share this episode with people that you love or you think would enjoy it. Check out my website, dianehendricks.com. 
follow me on all the social media, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. And I will see you the next time.